Hello, welcome back to the channel. Currently reporting from Beaumont, California. This place might look familiar to some of you guys. It's where I used to live, and more importantly, it's where I used to play poker. Now, today we are going back to a home game that I've played before on the vlog, and we've got this guy with me who keeps filming me, kind of an annoying fan. Uh, goes by Mr. Rampage Poker. I dragged him out here to play some 1025. Shouldn't be the highest stakes ever, but this is a pretty action game, so expect maybe some five figure results from both of us. I'm also about to interview this guy, which by the time you see this vlog should already be on my channel. So make sure to check out that video if you're interested in uh, hearing some questions I have for Rampage Poker. And that's all I have for now. So without any further ado, I'm gonna fly the drone and I'm gonna head to this private game. Good luck to us. I'll see you guys on the other side. Alright guys, welcome back. Today we're going to go over some hands from this 1025 No Limit home game. The action's pretty wild here, so let's get right into it. In the first one, there's an early position raised to 75 bucks, and I look down at king-queen suited on the button. Since I am in position, I think just calling or re-raising are both good options. This time I decide to re-raise. I make it 250 back around to the initial raiser and she makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up in position to a flop, which is certainly not my favorite. 10, nine, seven with one diamond. So we completely miss. I mean, we do have two overs and a straight draw. Also the backdoor flush drop, but that aside, this is a board that's generally gonna be a little better for her than for me. So don't really wanna start bluffing. She checks, I check it back. And the turn is the five of clubs. No improvement to me, so when she checks, I check it back, and we see another five on the river. But she checks for a third time, and even though we're probably going to get called a fair amount of the time, I would be betting some middling strength hands like maybe a nine or really any pair, perhaps even ace-king high for some super thin value. So I think having some bluffs makes sense too. So I try to steal this pot away, hoping that she folds ace high, for example. I put in 275 bucks. And we don't get snap called, which is good news, but we do eventually get called saying she just wants to see my hand. So I turn it over, she gets to see it, and also win the pot with ace jack of diamonds. Nice call from her. Lucky for me, no diamonds came out, but yeah, we lose this first one. In the next hand, we downgrade slightly to king jack of diamonds instead of king queen of diamonds. I open in late position to 75, and then the big blind makes it $325. We've got position, once again, with a very playable hand, so I am in there, and we go to a flop of king 6-3 with one diamond. He checks, and with top pair decent kicker on a pretty dry board like this, I think occasionally checking back makes some sense. So I do that this time, you know, be a little disguised on the times that we have strong hands or the times that we completely missed and such. Turn card is the seven of clubs, and now he comes out and bets $525. A pretty big bet compared to the size of the pot, but what am I gonna do besides call, right? So that's what I do, and we see the eight of clubs on the river. This time my opponent checks, and it seems like we've got the best hand, but I don't know, something felt a little off about this one. Perhaps we're being trapped by aces or a stronger king, so I decided to check it back. And it turns out he's got pocket kings for top set. The last remaining king appears on the flop. That is a little bit of run bad, but at least we don't lose too much. Moving on to this third hand, I open 9-7 offsuit to $75. We were playing the stand-up game at this point, and you know, you can make some straights, so why not? I make it 75 and get two callers. Do as I say, not as I do. By the way, this is a bad hand. But we see 665 on the flop, which gives me a straight draw and two overs. So I think a bet is totally fine. But then again, this is a low paired board, which I'm not gonna connect with too often. And at this point, I don't think I'm getting too much credit around here. So I check it, as does the player behind me. Turn card has me wishing that I had bet. It's the eight of hearts giving us the nut straight out of nowhere in a very disguised fashion, I might say. Action checks to me again, so it seems I'll have to do my own betting. I put in 100, and then the guy on my left raises to 300. This is a little bit weird. The guy behind him folds, now it's back to me, and of course, just calling is what you would call the normal play, but I think this might be one of those very rare situations where an unorthodox 
re re raise is in order here on the flop. And the reason I say this is well, number one, this is against a player who I've played many times with. He is a lot of action, and I am by no means concerned that we are necessarily beat just because he's raised this turn bet of mine. And secondly, our hand is super strong and we can get value from any six that tried to check back on the flop being sneaky, any eight that's trying to essentially buy a cheap showdown on the river, and a plethora of other hands. So I decide to go for it. I make it $1,100 to go, trying to build this pot while I have the best hand, or so I think. And my opponent makes the call right away. So we're going to a river, hoping for a brick. It's the four of diamonds. Tough to really tell if that's a brick. You know, maybe we were behind all along. Maybe he's got 6-4. Maybe this card gives him a straight if he's got a 7. But, you know, we've got the higher straight, so it could be good. I'm not too sure, but what I do know is I'm going to be putting a big bet into this pot because even though the board is paired, we do have a super strong hand. So I decide to throw in 2475. I was trying to calculate the size of the pot, and it looks like I got it pretty damn close here. So that's cool. What's not cool is that my opponent thinks for a little before announcing all in for 6,200 or so. That is a brutal, brutal thing to hear when you're betting a pot sized bet on the river with a straight into a paired board. Not the situation that anyone wants to be in. But it's time to break it down and make what I think is the best decision. And based on the way the hand has played, I just think we're beat. It's very likely he could have had a full house already on the turn or even on the flop for that matter. And of course, like I said, the four could have given him a full house too. Questionable how often that would happen, but it's, you know, a possibility. And furthermore, we do have some removal to bluffs, like if he was turning a pair and a straight draw into a bluff, because, you know, I've got the two cards that would be a straight draw for him. So yeah, I don't think about it for too long. Seems likely that we're beat. I let this one go, trying not to lose the maximum and just chalk it up to a cooler. And my opponent says, good fold, before showing me ace seven offsuit. Yeah, that is a straight, but it's a straight that I had beat. Lots I could say about this, but instead, let's just move on to the next hand, where there's an early position open to $125, and I call the straddle with queen five of spades. Heads up to a flop, which looks pretty damn good. It's queen five deuce with a flush draw. I check, hoping he bets, but he does not. Turn card is the ten of spades. Time to do my own bidding. Once more, I throw in $200. My opponent makes the call, which I'm happy to see. And we go to the ace of spades on the river. Not my favorite card by any means, as some straights and even some better two pairs get there. But of course, we still have a very strong hand and could get called by worse. So similar to the last hand, I put in a pot-sized bet, same as I would with any sort of bluff. $675 into the middle, and yet again, we get raised. He makes it $1,600. <sighs> it sure has been a frustrating start to the night, but even though last hand was a complete disaster, I still think for the most part in these types of situations, we're likely not going to have the winner. So I again fold. And this time my opponent luckily shows me a hand that did have me beat. Ace five for the rivered aces up. A better two pair than my own. And we lose this one as well. Needless to say, we've got our work cut out for us. I also lost a few other small pots that weren't really worth mentioning on the vlog. But at this point, I am stuck like $10,000 already if not more. So let's see if we can turn things around. In this next one, things get rather weird because the player in the big blind announces that he's ready to go home. He's got like 600 bucks left. And as soon as he gets dealt in, he seems rather excited about putting his remaining chips into the pot. So when there's a few limpers and I look down at King Jack offsuit, I decide to limp along and see if he really does go all in. And it turns out he does. He puts in $615 total. That is all of the chips he has left. And then it gets back around to a player who limped in from early position who calls the $615. Now it's back to me. And I think, although looking back, I'm probably wrong, but I think King Jack in this spot is a good candidate for a squeeze play. The player who called the 615 how strong could his hand really be after limping for 25 and then calling the 615? 
I mean, yeah, he could be trapping with a super strong hand, but I think for the most part, he's going to have some sort of middling pair or maybe like a weak ace high, maybe like king queen. And all those sorts of holdings are going to be in tough shape against a back raise from me. Now, of course, you could argue how strong of a hand I would really have in this situation after over limping on the button. But considering that the big blind was saying he was going to go all in, I think it is credible I could have some strong stuff here. So I decide to pounce on this by making it $3,000, hoping to fold out the player who called the 615 in middle position, get his free money into the pot, and then maybe flip against the big blind who could be all in with any two random cards, essentially. However, that does not happen. I make it 3000 right? And then it gets back to this guy who initially limped for 25 called the $615 all-in, and he decides that now is the time for an all-in. $9,000 back to me, and it's 6 k to call into a pot that has ballooned into, I don't know what, 12000 or so, maybe more, 13000 Just an absurd situation. I hope I've done a decent job explaining the action because this is all pre-flop, and I know there's not like a whole lot of visual stuff going on on the screen right now, but this is such a weird spot. I think it's obvious now we don't have the best hand, but if he does have a small pair, we are flipping, and of course, getting the price that we're getting, a flip is a no-brainer call. Then again, if we're up against like Ace-King or any sort of big Broadway hands that contain Ace-High, we could be in some pretty bad shape. So I think it's actually quite close, but I decide to just call, considering that I put 3K in already, the pot is 12K, and it's only 6,000 for me to call secretly kicking myself for creating this situation but high variance gambling sometimes it goes like this you know so i put in the money and we all three decide to run it twice so nearly twenty thousand dollars in the middle going to a first board on which we flop a pair it's queen jack something 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 so that gives me second pair and then on the second board we make top pair as a king arrives on the turn. So we do have a decent pair on both boards, and it turns out my opponent has pocket sixes, meaning the guy who went all in for 9K. At this point, that's really all I care about, you know, because if we're beat by the player all in for $600, I think I'll be all right so long as we win that $9,000 profit on the side. And that's exactly what ends up happening. The guy who went all in for 615, he had ace jack of diamonds. So he only beat us on the top board. We chop with him for the 1800 in the main pot. And then we scoop the entire massive side pot of $18,000 or so against pocket sixes. A very good result after a very questionable hand and a very long-winded hand history. So if you guys are sick of that one, you're in luck because we're moving on to this next one where it folds around to Mr. Rampage Poker himself. He is on my direct right, and we are the last two remaining players for stand-up in this round of stand-up that we're playing. In case you guys don't know, all that means is you have to win a hand in order to sit back down, and if you're the last player to win a hand, meaning you lose the game, you owe everyone a bounty. In this case, I think it was like 100 bucks per player. So we decided to, instead of looking at our hands, when it folded around to us, let's flip for it. We throw in $500 each. Whoever wins the pot ends up winning the stand-up game, in essence, avoiding the penalty, and also collecting the pot. So we're off to a flip, one board, 500 each, lots at stake here, not just pride, but of course, US dollars. He shows the nine in diamonds. I turn over the five of clubs. We go to our run out, which comes queen, eight, four, deuce, jack. His second card is the three of diamonds. So my friend here just has nine high. That's a good thing for me, but of course, we gotta turn over that other card and see if we can beat that nine high because we do have any random card hiding under here. But it's a queen of spades, so that is great news. We end up winning the pot. Rampage loses stand-up, and just like that, we are back on track to a winning session. In the next hand, things get a lot more normal, I guess you could say. There's an early position open to $150. It looks like the 50 was on as a straddle. I look down at ace-king in middle position, worthy of a re-raise, so I make it $500 and the initial raiser calls. So we go heads up to a dry board of 993 with two diamonds. He checks to me and I think a small bet is in order, but occasionally checking back, considering I don't have an ace or king of diamonds, I think it's fine. So I check it back and we see the six of clubs on the turn. 
He checks again. I check it back, considering we could still have the best hand against some weaker ace highs. And then we see the eight of hearts on the river. He checks it a third time, and I feel like if he had a pair or something at least decent, he would have bet the turn, maybe even the river. So I think we can go for some very thin value with the nut no pair, as they say. For all you guys who are going to say I do have a pair of nines, because that's what's on the board, you should crack a window, get some air. But anyway, I do decide to bet very tiny, $250, around a quarter pot. This is not computer approved by any means, but similar to a few hands ago, this is an opponent I've played plenty against, so I choose to go for some small value, knowing damn well we might get called by a better hand. But eventually he does call, and we win. When I turn over the ace-king, he says he had a worse ace-high, so that is ideally what you want when making a stupid play like that. It works out and makes you feel like a genius. That's exactly what we're going to need to feel like as this next hand comes up. There's an under-the-gun all-in for $1,175, folds all the way around to me in the straddle, and before I look at my cards, I decide to turn one over and see if we can negotiate something with the player who is all-in. Turns out it's the deuce of clubs, so that is not good for me. But I ask him if he's got a pair, and he says no. So how bad of shape can we really be in, right? Maybe we have two live cards. He probably doesn't have a deuce, and if he doesn't have a pair, I mean, it can't be that bad. So I decide to call, give my man some action here. Probably behind, let's be honest, but who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Go to a run out without even knowing what my other card is. Comes 6-7, king-5. Deuce on the river. That's right, we make a pair. That means we are now beating all sorts of legitimate hands like ace queen or ace jack suited, for example. But unfortunately, my opponent turns over ace seven of hearts, which means he's got a pair of sevens. That is very bad news. Now we need to turn over either a king, a six, a seven, a five, or another deuce to win. Any other card is not going to work out. My other card is still face down, so it's a mystery whether or not we're going to win this hand. I call my friend Ernie over from the other side of the table. If you guys know who Ernie is, this is a legendary character from Morongo. He's made a few appearances on my vlogs in the past, and I feel like he's got that luck coursing through his fingers. I give him my other card to turn over. It's not looking good, but come on, dude. That's right, Ernie turns over the five of clubs. We flop to flush draw and go runner runner two pair for the win. Suddenly things are going much better. And with that, we move to the biggest pot of the night. In this one, I double straddle to $100. There's a button open to 300. Ethan calls in the first straddle on my right and I defend with ace six offsuit. Against the button raise, I think it's totally fine. We've got an ace and you know, we've already got a hundred in there. So I toss in the extra two and we go to a great flop of ace, eight, six with two hearts, one diamond. That gives us aces up on a draw heavy board. Rampage checks, I check it. And now the initial raiser on the button continues for a bet of $600. Ethan folds and now it's back on me. Considering that all these draws are available and I would probably be check raising with some of those. Got to balance that out with the times I actually do have it, which on a board like this is not going to be too often. So I think a raise is certainly in order. I make it $1,800 to go. Now it's back on the button. And she goes deep in thought once I make it $1,800. Saying that she's not sure what to do. She doesn't really believe me, but she doesn't want to fold. A few minutes go by. I'm thinking she's probably going to fold, but hoping, of course, that she calls. It turns out she does neither one. Instead announces all-in for $15,000. A giant all-in right here on the flop. And I gotta admit, even though my hand is pretty sick, I was not in love with this because now I'm thinking, was that Hollywood? Does she have a set? Does she have ace eight, for example? But at the end of the day, two pairs, two pair. If she's got me beat, she's gonna have to show me. So I make the call. And just like that, we are suddenly playing a $32,000 pot here at the home game. And it seems like this night will come down to this pot because this is by far the biggest one I'll probably play tonight. She asked to run it twice. I say, no problem. First run out comes Jack of Hearts, Deuce of Hearts. So we end up having a six high flush. 
not very good. Second run out is nine of hearts, 10 of diamonds. So we've still just got two pair on that one. And we end up scooping the entire pot versus eight, three offsuit. That's right, the old Octocrab. In this case, it was middle pair. And it seems like she was being honest after my flop check raise that she just didn't believe me and perhaps didn't want to be put into a difficult decision on the turn or river. Decides the hell with it. If you've got a draw, I'm gonna make you fold it. And if you've got me beat, that's fine. I'm all in with middle pair. And it works out for us, of course, as this time I did happen to have it with top and bottom pair. Ace six offsuit holds, and we are having a great night all of the sudden. And with that, we move to this next one, where there's an early position open to $350. Two players make the call, and I look down at queen nine suited in the straddle. A good hand to squeeze with, I think, although not every time. Just doesn't perform very well multi-way. Even though it does look like a playable hand, most of the time it's just gonna be a disaster. So I decide to either try to take it down pre-flop or at least get it heads up, make it $2,000. The initial raiser folds, but the player who called the raise first, she makes the call and everyone else folds. So this is the same opponent as last hand. She makes the call, keeping me honest, and we go to a flop out of position of jack, nine, eight, no spades, two hearts out there. Middle pair plus a straight draw, but all in all, not necessarily the best flop for me. So I decide to check out of position and see what she wants to do. I'm happy to see her check it back and we see the four of clubs on the turn. Now I decide to bet small around one third the size of the pot, but I accidentally misclick and put in $750. I don't know exactly how that happened, Looking back at this video now, I, I didn't even realize actually until watching this now, but if my math is correct, this pot was nearly $5,000 and I only put in like 700 bucks. That's weird. Probably don't drink two hazy IPAs while playing a private game. But anyway, I put in 750 bucks and she ends up folding. So it doesn't really matter in the end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the final hand of tonight's session. In this one, Ethan opens to 100, and I am next to act with Ace-10 offsuit. Not really the best hand to call multi-way with, and we don't have position, so I think the times we do play it from this exact situation, it's either a re-raise or just a fold, if I'm being honest. Probably fold is best, but I decided to make it $400 against my buddy. Two players call on my left, and then it gets back around to Rampage, and he just folds downswing must be pretty tough but anyway we go three ways to a flop out of position of 10 6 6 with two hearts that's top pair top kicker baby so i'm gonna keep betting put in 425 dollars first player folds but the second player makes the call so we're off to a turn which is the king of diamonds this time i decide to check it not just because i no longer have top pair in fact, I think the king is mostly a brick, unless he had a king high flush draw that now turns a pair, but mostly because I think there's more value in allowing him to bluff, and I also don't think we have a hand that can get three streets of value versus something worse. So I check, being out of position seems like the thing to do, and I'm happy to see him check it back as well. Off to a river, which is the eight of diamonds, bringing in some potential flushes and some potential straights. But all of those flush and straight draws, I suspect would have bluffed on the turn. So I'm not too worried about it. I think we're actually up against a 10 or maybe some sort of middling pair like sevens or nines. He could of course have pocket eights, no doubt about that. But I still think a value bet is a good play here. Could get away with getting some value from a worse hand, I think. Don't wanna go too big though, since you know I'm not representing something super strong or super weak, but yeah, anyway, I bet half pot, 1200 bucks. My opponent thinks for a while and goes for the punishment. He makes it $2,800. This is very odd. 1600 for me to call, so we're getting a good price. But I just can't figure out what he would be bluffing with. Is he turning a 10 into a bluff? Unlikely. Maybe he's going for some thin value with a king. That would suck if he checked back a king on the turn and then decides to eke out some extra value on the river with a raise. Seems a little bit too uh, ridiculous for him to try that, but it very well might work if that's what he's got. I don't know. This one was really confusing. I just could not figure it out. And in the end, when I encounter situations where nothing really makes sense and I'm getting a good price, I typically just shrug and call 
and this time was no exception. So that's what I do. I toss in the 1600 bucks, and I'm happy to hear you're good. So we turn it over, not interested in making anyone show the losing hand. If I've got the winner, that's cool, really all I care about. And we do have the winner this time, taking down this nearly $8,000 pot. A very nice way to end the session. But at this point, it was around midnight. Rampage and I decided to call it a night. It's a long drive back to LA. So as always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. All right, so yeah, just... So wrapping thing... <laughs> so we just finished playing and Ethan is in this kind of mood where he just hates everything and wants to troll non-stop I'm gonna have some fun in life when I give away money leave your guesses down in the comments whether he won or lost based on this demeanor <laughs> as for myself um my approach typically when I play this game, and by the way, excuse my voice, I was screaming too much in that game. My approach in these games is to typically give action and try to like break even, maybe win a little or lose a little with high variance and just whatever happens, happens. But um, I think today was a good example of both things that could happen when you play that way because like the first half of the game, I just lost every single hand and played terribly and you know, it kind of went to show how things can go poorly when you do that and then the second half of the game I just ran super hot and continued to play probably poorly but ran hot won a bunch of money and in the end I did more of that than of the losing so <laughs> I was in for an embarrassing amount I was in for um, 40,000 into this game which is just stupid for a 1025 game but I cashed out for 52 and change so I won like 12k which is pretty cool makes the drive worth it because we pulled like a one and a half hour trip to get here and now I gotta drive this dude home the things you do for whales you know the whale treatment chauffeur and everything <laughs> customer service is top notch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. I feel like the hands in this game in particular are always really funny and interesting. At least that's how they feel when I'm playing them. And check out his vlog on this game, which will come out hopefully soon. Um, unless you're like backed up months like months. you are sometimes. Months. At least months. months. Okay, well, check his video out when it comes out. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. See you all next time. Until then, good luck at your local tables. Peace.